Well, our next guest says climate technology is the biggest investment opportunity of this century. Tommy Stadlin, co-founder at Giant Ventures, joins us now. Good morning to you, Tommy. Well, uh, very noble initiative, of course, and I, I, I would tend to agree with you. The question that I have about investing in startups and purpose-driven companies is how you discern the more economically viable companies from the ones with the pipe dream and that tend to be a little bit faddish, especially in an environment where the, the era of high-growth companies that don't produce the cash flows is coming to an end. It's a great question. We found a giant on a very simple premise that the largest companies of the decade will be purpose-driven technology companies that at their core are solving a big global challenge that really matters to society. So climate change, but also healthcare and, and inequality. And our very simple promise to our investors is that we will deliver top venture returns by investing in these purpose-driven technology companies. So we don't see a trade-off between companies that are doing good and doing well at all. Uh, you mentioned that you know difficult time that we've seen in the technology markets. And what we're witnessing in the private markets is a uh, trend transitioning out of traditional technology into climate. And I think people have realized that this is the economic opportunity of the decade and the century. And that if you're not going to be have exposure to climate uh, technology, you really do risk significant losses with stranded assets. Tell me, what do you make of the argument that some of the incumbents in that space, so the traditional oil and gas companies, have a competitive edge over other new entry point, uh, new entrants, namely because they've got the infrastructure and the technical expertise already to begin with that would um, put them in a better position at scaling up than some of these smaller startups? Well, it, it's an argument that we see a lot. It frankly reminds me a lot of the software uh, venture investors who always would say, well, you know, what if Google builds this product? What if Facebook builds this product? And yet what we see time and time again is that very small teams of startup entrepreneurs are able to disrupt at incredible speed, very, very uh, large vested interest incumbent industries. And I think we're seeing the same in climate where it is not the BPs and shells of the world who are driving this green transition. They've had the chance to do that for many decades and basically haven't done enough. And what we're seeing is very well-funded early stage startups whose names many of us don't know yet and they will be the ones who will get us to net zero by 2050 and if they do that that is the biggest economic transition in history it will be bigger than the internet both in terms of the winners that that creates but also some of the losers who remain in stranded assets like like oil uh, Tommy, uh, you know, as, as Jumana was speaking, she was speaking about discerning between the ones that are perhaps more sustainable, right, that are able to scale up, the ones that aren't necessarily just fads. But really, even all of this is based on the ESG market, which we already have quite an imperative stance on, particularly for large companies. Um, how much of an investment in this climate tech is there right now, for example, and, and, and how much growth could there possibly be from here? Well, we see a big distinction between uh, genuinely good climate technology, which are companies that will stand on their own two feet and deliver profit, um, and companies who rely on government subsidies or companies who rely on ESG. Now, we've seen, I think, a lot of uh, justified cynicism about ESG in the public markets. And a lot of that is box ticking. It's, you know, do no harm, maybe don't invest in tobacco or arms or things like that. But it's not fundamentally investing in companies that are actually driving as their core purpose, climate transition, health and so on. And in the private markets, I think we've seen people do a better job of investing in companies who, as they scale their impact, are also scale, scaling commercial revenues. Because don't forget what we're trying to do here is deliver very, very significant venture returns by backing these type of companies. And so I think it's less interesting, certainly to us at Giant to back companies who might have a positive impact on the world at a small scale, but are never really going to become very big companies. And if you look at a company like Tesla, you know, that is probably the largest startup outcome in history, and it's a climate tech company. So the examples are there of very, very large companies whose core purpose is trying to change some of these issues that we face as society. Yeah, so what are the, the exact technology trends perhaps you, you might be looking to now that you're uh, seeing as impacting this space sufficiently? Well, we see some trends which are a bit overhyped. So we literally see a different carbon accounting company every single week. Someone trying to help big corporates account for their carbon. That's very crowded. We haven't done something there. 
But one slightly overlooked theme is biomanufacturing. So if we look at biomanufacturing, that can transition industries, everything from petrochemicals to alternative protein through to the way pharmaceuticals are made. And there we've been very active in backing the picks and shovels. So companies like Synonym, who will provide a financing platform to allow the creation of biomanufacturing facilities, or companies like Inver, which will use AI and data to improve the yield on biomanufacturing so that we can transition away from things like traditional meat, traditional petrochemicals, towards a century of biology. So if the 20th century was the century of chemistry, we think the 21st century will be the century of biology. Okay, well, I like that. Uh, One question I want to ask you, Tommy, is where you see nuclear energy in all of this. You talk about climate tech solutions. It's an ongoing, raging debate, not just over here in Europe, but across all over the world, because uh, proponents on both sides get very, very uh, heated when, whenever the, t- the concept of nuclear energy comes up. What I read tells me that it, it's almost impossible to get to net zero simply just relying on renewables. You have to find an alternative source of energy, and that's where, that's the gap that nuclear can fill. What is your interpretation of the situation? I see nuclear has a, a branding issue and a capital issue. So the branding issue is uh, folks in other parts of the industry, energy industry have been incredibly effective at scaremongering. And I think new nuclear is clearly far safer than the old days. But it also has a capital problem. So venture investors like me find it very difficult to fund nuclear innovation just because it's so capital intensive and the timelines are very long, 10, 20 years Whereas in venture capital, we need 10 year returns, of course. And so I think that's where governments need to step in. And you were talking earlier on in your program about the EU's response to the Biden Inflation Reduction Act. And that is an area I think these very long lead time technologies, they do require government support. And I think that's the funding gap we typically see in Europe, but also in the US. And and you're absolutely right. We will not get to net zero without nuclear being part of the answer. This is definitely more than just a growing space, Tommy. So so appreciate the conversation and hopefully we'll uh, get you on to chat about it again. Tommy Stadlin, co-founder of Giant Ventures, there talking to us then, particularly about climate tech investing.